Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how to create an emissive material in Unreal Engine. I have this very basic scene that I've been using for other videos to create some effects. And so right now, I just have a cube in this scene, you know, just a normal cube. And so to create a glowing effect or an emissive effect, the first thing you need to do is to create a new material. So I'm going to create a material, call it M emissive. I'm going to open that. And in here, things are going to be very simple. Um, what I'm going to do is create a new color. So I'm going to write constant and get a constant 3 vector. So this is how you get a color in Unreal Engine when you are creating materials, in case you were not aware. And I'm going to connect this color directly, not into the base color, but in the emissive color. So far this makes sense, we want some emissive material, so we just have to connect some sort of color into this emissive color. And let's say I want that to be some sort of, let's say blue. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to save this material. So back into my scene, if I drag and drop this material onto my cube, we can see that it has a new color now, we can see this is kind of the color we chose before. But it is not really emissive. And there is two reasons for that. First, in my material, I'm using the emissive color, but the property is just basically a normal color. And to get it emissive, I need to improve its values. So if I double click on the color directly here, this will open the color picker menu. And what I can do to improve the emissive effect is to increase all those values to a higher number. So here I have 0.23 for the red. I'm just going to say 23. 0.22 for the green, I'm just going to say 22. And for the blue, I'm going to say 69 instead of 0.69. And here we have a different color as we can see. We have the same base color as before, but now we have this emissive effect. I'm just going to save. And here we go, we have an emissive cube. But this is not necessarily very satisfying. So while this is working, and while you can use this method, not only in a material, but also in other VFX, like using Niagara, for example, um, what you're doing here is changing the values manually. But a better approach to this problem is to create a new variable. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to look for constant. This time I'm just going to pick the constant one. And I'm going to rename that. I'm going to convert it to a parameter first, sorry, convert to parameter and I'm going to rename that to intensity. And I'm going to right click, look for a multiply material. What I'm going to do is collect my color that I used at first here directly into the A and the intensity into B. All right, so this approach is better for two reasons. So while we created a color earlier that we can change as we want, uh, to change the intensity, we have to manually like improve the values. And this is kind of hard because the moment you start to move the slider, it's going to go back to one because RGB values are supposed to be kept between zero and one. So we have to manually tap every time uh, the intensity to be higher. Okay, this is 100. Or actually, this is too much. I have to type manually this value for all of that. But if I use an intensity value here, I can choose this directly. I can change the intensity here and I can change the color on its own. So this way I have control over the base color and the level of intensity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say blue again. Um, and here I'm changing that to normal blue values. So this is not emissive anymore. And I want the intensity to be 10. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the multiply into the emissive color. And here we go. We have some, uh, some intensity, but actually I'm not really happy. So I can change that into 20. Let's, let's go for 50, 60. Let's go for 60. And actually, I'm not really happy with blue. You know what? I want, I want some red. Red is good. And there we go. So I have a control over the color here on its own, and I have a control over the intensity on its own. Creating a parameter for intensity and color also allows you to create as many materials uh, as you want that derivate from this emissive material. So I can just, just gonna save it. You can see in my scene, my cube is right now, and I can create a material instance. And I can say, uh, M E red. I'm gonna say M I E red. So M I for material instance, E for emissive and red. This is not the best name convention, but it doesn't really matter. 
And here I can see that I can change the intensity. And same thing if I just go back to my material, uh, convert this into a parameter because I forgot to do that at the beginning. We have the color, I'm saving. So I have two parameters, the base color, which is the constant three and the intensity, which is uh, a normal constant. Back into my material, now I can change the color directly. I want some sort of green, okay. And I want the intensity to be, to be really bright. And I can just drag and drop this into my cube. And here we go, we have an emissive material. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, you have two things to keep in mind when you're creating emissive materials. First, the material itself, but you also want to make sure that you have the bloom activated. So bloom is a post-processing effect that is activated by default in every project in Unreal Engine. But sometimes for some reason, maybe you just decided to turn off the post-processing. So in the case of you don't have any bloom effect and you're not really sure why this is not happening, you can add into your scene a volume, look for post-processing volume. So that should be at the very bottom. And in this post processing volume, you're going to search for infinite, infinite extent. So you're going to check that on. And this will make sure this is applied to the entire scene. And I'm going to look for bloom. Sam, I can change the intensity here. And this is what's going to really matter if you want a blooming effect, because if you have zero, well, this is not really working. And the higher the intensity value and the more bloom will be applied and the more emissive, everything will be in the scene. So right now I have a tornado in the scene. If I turn off the bloom, you can see this tornado is kind of boring. If I improve it, you can see it's much brighter. So this is pretty much it. So keep in mind that you need to have a material with a color and an intensity value directly plugged into the emissive color of this material. And you need to have the bloom effect activated. You can play around with the bloom effect. You can play around, for example, with the different methods. You only have standard and convolution. I think in most projects, people use 10. And you can use uh, a value for the threshold, which is going to define a threshold as mentioned in the name. And so that's pretty much it for this video. And I will see you in the next one.